And I'm here, I'm one of the buzzer. <laughs> I'm one of the buzzer. <laughs> hey yo, what's up, Mabuna Young and Fearless? Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to this amazing man, the amazing channel as well. This is the Afro Urban Your Gosh for Worship Experience. That is the MYF. My name is Kevin Kilonzi, aka Kev the Rev. And I'm so glad to be uh, taking us through this uh, preach uh, today. Uh, happy Easter Sunday, everybody! Woo! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> now I enjoy free public national holidays just like the next guy yeah uh, I really enjoy having a time to kick back chill out relax uh, and all that uh, but I think more and more the more uh, you know I investigate into our Christian holidays I think they really just to just that a uh, free public national holidays you know a time to kick back relax uh, eat out uh, enjoy uh, and I think in there we've lost the significance of some of our holidays of course the significance for christmas that that's gone uh but i think more and more i'm also realizing that you are also losing the significance of easter uh i think it's been reduced to easter bunnies and easter eggs that's it um and so today in our fast paced culture uh, i think we are no longer posing long enough to wonder why the season is there and so hopefully today i want us to take us i want to go through a conversation that i think will help us to re-engage with the true meaning of the Easter weekend. Now we're gonna be considering two questions which if we answer I think we'll have an opportunity to turn back to the true meaning of Easter and uh, and celebrate this season in a befitting manner and so we'll be handing two questions. Say two questions! Two, two questions. questions! So number one uh, what does Easter mean and then number two why does Easter matter? So number one what does Easter, Easter mean? mean and number two why does Easter matter? matter? All right so what does it mean? Now, number one, Easter means that Jesus is who he, he claimed to be. Number one, Easter means that Jesus is who he claimed to be. Now, you see, many people look at Jesus today and we look at the sound teachings he gave. We look at how he taught with authority. We look at how uh, he taught his disciples. And many times we reduce the person of Jesus to be just that, a good teacher. And we easily think that Jesus claimed to be a good teacher. But here's the deal. Jesus never claimed to be a good teacher. I mean, think about it. If I if I arose today uh, or in Jesus' time and, and I came and said, I'm a good teacher, or even claimed that I'm a good leader, well, some of you would say, yeah, it's true. Come on, man, that's a good teacher. Some of you would say, well, you're not a good teacher. All you say is, come on, man, and keep shouting at us uh, and all that. You know, and uh, to that person, I say, she do it. Um, uh, but... It will be a claim, it will be a clash of opinions. Uh, none of us would pick up stones and say, want to kill you for claiming to be a good teacher or a good leader. It would maybe cause anger, but not a controversy, uh, 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 not that. But Jesus made a claim that made people around him to do just that. Jesus made a claim that made people around him pick up stones and kill him. Why? Because Jesus didn't claim to be a good teacher. Jesus claimed to be God. Now that's radical. I mean, if I claim to be a good teacher or a good leader, a clash of opinions, people would say, well, you're not. It would, you know, we would argue about that. But on the other hand, if I stood up and claimed to be God, you would go like, whoa, like that, that's a huge claim. And then now take that to uh, Israel, uh, this culture that's, you know, that worships the one and only true God. And then someone comes up and says they are equal to that God. They just pick up stones and do just exactly uh, what they did. Pick up stones to kill him. Now, uh, Josh McDowell in his book, uh, More Than a Carpenter, he comes and makes this assertion and says, when you examine the claims that Jesus made, you can only come up with four conclusions. Number one, he's either a liar, Number two, he's either a lunatic like he's gone cuckoo. Uh, number three, he's a legend in terms of he's a staff of myth, never happened. Or simply, he's Lord. Liar, Lord, a uh, liar, lunatic, legend, or Lord. And, and, and when you look at the life of Jesus, man, he's just who he claimed to be, his Lord. He's not a liar because there was such a consistency in what he said. He's not a lunatic because there was clarity. Uh, take just the sermon on the mount, such clarity in what he said. Uh, he's not a legend because he's truly, he truly lived. He's someone who lived. He's not a staff of myth. And so he's simply what he said he was. 
Lord. John chapter 14 says this. Jesus says, He that has seen me has seen the Father, for the Father and I are one. Look at that. John chapter 2 verse 18 to 19. Jesus comes over and says, uh, people come to Jesus and says, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? And verse 17, Jesus says this, Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. So Jesus says, this is how you're going to know that I'm God. Destroy this temple and I'll ra raise it again in three days. In other words, destroy this temple and I'm going to pull off Easter to prove that I'm just what I've claimed to be. Who? God. Oh, come on, man. Amen. That's a good story right there. So number one, Easter proves or Easter means that Jesus is who he claimed to be. And what did he claim to be? God. But number two, Easter means that Jesus had what he claimed to have. Now, Jesus claimed to have power and authority over life and death. And he said that, that, that power and authority had been given to him. John chapter 10 verse 18 says this, 17 to 18 says this, The reason that my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. Easter Verse 18, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. Jesus is saying, I have power and authority to lay down my life. Jesus is saying, I have power and authority to lay down my life on Easter Friday and to raise it up again on Sunday. That's Jesus. That's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, my friends, I'm going to die for you, not because I'm being forced to, but I'm doing it willingly. I'm laying down my life. No one is taking it away from me. I'm doing it for you. And so during Easter, Jesus' death and resurrection, they validate just that, that he had power and he had authority. So number one, Easter, remember, I don't want you to forget, Jesus, had, 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 uh, uh, Jesus uh, uh, was who he claimed to be. Uh, but number two, uh, Jesus had authority. Jesus had authority and power. He had what he claimed uh, to have. Finally, what does Easter mean? Easter means this, that Jesus did what he claimed he would do. Jesus claimed, uh, uh, Jesus did what he claimed he would do. What did Jesus claim uh, to do and he did it? Mark chapter 10 verse 3. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said. And the son of man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Oh, come on. I said three days later, he will rise. He will rise. And so Jesus did what he claimed he would do. What he did claim he would do. He said, I'm going to die and I will rise again. And that happens exactly just as he had said. He goes to Jerusalem, he lays down his life, and he rises up again from the death. And so friends, our Lord's death, Jesus' death was no accident. It was not an oops like, oh, I'm a kufa. Oh, tum, tum, no, he had actually said it. He knew about it. And uh, it was a sovereign decision that he had made and he did it just as he had said. Easter proves to us that number one, Jesus is uh, 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 that number one, Jesus, uh, sorry, I have to go back. That Jesus is who he claimed uh, to be and he claimed to be God. Number two, that Jesus uh, 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 had what he claimed to have, that is power and authority. And then finally, Jesus did what he claimed he would do. That is to lay down his life and to raise it up again. So number one, first question you've answered, what does Easter mean? That's what it means. But number two, why does it matter? Why does it, wh wh how does it affect cocoa production in Ghana? <laughs> or whichever country that is. Wh what does it affect me today? So Jesus is who he claimed to be. So what does that matter to me? So Jesus had what he claimed to have. That is power and authority. Why does it matter to me? So Jesus uh, 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 did what he claimed he would do. Why does it, uh, you know, uh, affect me today? Why does Easter matter? Now, here's why it matters to you. I'm going to give us a reason why Easter matters to you. Why it matters that he's, he's who he claimed to be, that he had what he claimed to have, that he did what he claimed he would do. It matters to you because, number one, ah, uh, if Jesus is who he claimed to be, that is God, then my future is secure. Oh, come on, man. Oh, come on, man. If Jesus is who he claimed to be, that is God, he claimed to be God, 
then your future and my future is secure. Why? Because Jesus tells you and I to, to, to entrust to him the future, our eternal destiny. He says, you can, you can give it to me. And then he did exactly what he, he, he said he would do. He, he proves himself to be the person he claimed to be. And because of that, because he claimed to be God and he did exactly what he had said he would do, then you can come back today and say, if he is God, if he claimed to be God, then I'm able to entrust my future to him. I'm able to entrust my future to him. Now, here's the deal, guys. My F, my, my F leaders, listen. <laughs> Statistics on death are amazing. Yeah? The statistics show that 10 out of 10 people will die. And so because of that, <laughs> you want to ask yourself, when your time comes, are you sure of where you'll spend your eternal uh, 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 space? Where will you be in light of eternity? And Jesus says, you can trust me with that. That's what he tells you, you and I. He came to be God and because he is God, you and I can entrust to him our eternal destiny. John 14 says this. Oh, this is an encouragement to someone. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you will also be. And where I go, you know. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. And then one of his disciples called Thomas hearing that says, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus looks at him straight in the face and says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Friends, it matters to us that Jesus is who he claimed to be because if we have pegged our eternity on him, then he needs to be exactly what he claimed to be. Jesus claims to be God and Easter proves it. And because he said that, because he is that, because he is that, then we are able to trust him as the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I know um, last last month we tackled a lot on apologetics and, you know, the claims that Jesus made and all that. Um, and today I want to give one more, one more uh, final conclusion. Um, you know, we always, people, we hear all over the place, people saying that all religious are on the same path to heaven. I'm like, really? Uh, I mean, it's like someone today looking at me and saying, hey, uh, can I call you? And then I say, um, call any 10 numbers randomly and you'll get me. You'll be like, no, there must be a specific number to call you. There must be a specific sequence to call you. But if I tell you, oh, I'll just take your phone, you are sincere anyway, just dial in 10 numbers, you'll be like, and you're like, no. One of the analogy that is given, which I think is not a bright analogy, is the elephant analogy. You know, these blind people go and they are touching. Oh, elephant is a small whisk because they touch the tail. Elephant is a big stump because they touch the foot. Elephant is a smooth whatever because they touch the tusk. Elephant is a big blanket because they touch the, the, the ears. And, and people come and conclude to us that, you know, that, that, you know, we are all blind people trying to, you know, decipher an elephant. The conclusion of that analogy is that everyone was wrong. <laughs> That's the conclusion. No one was right. Here is the difference with Christianity. The elephant gives birth to a blind man who comes to them and says, this is how you'll know the elephant. Why? I am from the elephant. I and the elephant are one. That's what Jesus did. Oh, come on, man. This is good news. That's what Jesus did for you and I. And because of that, you can entrust your future to him. You can entrust your future to him. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me, he shall never die. There is every reason for us to entrust our future to Jesus. So not number one, but number two, it matters to us because if Jesus uh, 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 heard what he claimed to have, the new and high have hope presently. If Jesus had what he claimed to have, that is power and authority, then you and I have hope presently. Now, here's the deal. Our future is secure because of his God, but presently, he said he has power and he has authority. And so we can be able to walk with a certain hope, with a certain perspective in life, like, in, like uh, uh, no other person. Jesus said, 
lo i am with you always to the very end of age jesus is like is not like any other spiritual guru he died and is resurrected and he's alive and so he's there presently for you his resurrection is amazing because it means he is with you even right now ah oh. He said he has the power, he has the authority to lay down his life and to pick it up. Therefore, it means he has, he has the power and authority to take your life in the way that he should go. That's why you and I should be able to say we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Today, you can be able to trust him with your relationship. Today, you can be able to trust him. Yes, your parents are fighting, probably at the brink of divorce, but you can trust him to give you power and authority. Today, your mind is spinning out of control. All you can be able to think about are suicidal thoughts, but you can still be able to trust him. Why? He has power and authority. Today, you need wisdom to be able to do your exams or whatever else uh, life throws at you, but you can be able to wait on him. Why? He has power and authority. You need provision. He has that power. You need protection. He has that power and he has that authority. And that's why Easter matters to you and I. Why? On one hand, we know where we are going. We know where we are going as far as eternity is concerned. But then on the other hand, today, right here, right now, our life makes sense. Why? He has power and authority to take us through the things that we go through today. But then finally, it matters to us because Jesus did what he claimed to do. Jesus did what he claimed to do. And part of what he did for us, he said, he will forgive us our sins. If Jesus did what he claimed to do, then it means for you today that your past sins are forgiven. John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You see, the problem or the gap or the barrier there is, is that there is division between us and God. There's, there's something called sin that keeps us from experiencing God. And God. And the Bible says that God made he who had no sin to become sin so that you and I can become the righteousness of God. Uh, and, and, and Jesus hung on the cross and, and he said, you're forgiven. Jesus pulled off Easter so that you and I can have our sins forgiven. Jesus did what he claimed he would do so that you and I can have our sins forgiven. Listen to me, guys. Jesus did not pay a deposit for your sin. Jesus paid the full price. The wages of sin is death. And he said, okay, I'm going to take it all. And at the cross, he said, it's finished. And because of that, you can walk free. You can walk redeemed. You can walk justified. Why? Because he did what he claimed he would do. Oh, come on, man. That's, that's good news. That's good news. That's good news. Ah, you need to realize that all your sins are nailed to the cross. And the next time the enemy comes to whisper at your ear and says, hey, Kevin, but you did this and that, you can say even that is nailed to the cross. But you sleep around, even that is nailed to the cross. But you used to drink and, and you used to do this and that, hey, even that is nailed to the cross. The Bible says, behold, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, the old is gone and the new has come and is able to take you through a consistent renewal because he did what he claimed he would do. This is what happens when you go to Jesus. When you go to him and say, Lord, I need a new start. He says, that's why I came. That's why I pulled off Easter. This is why Easter is important to you and I. It's not just another public holiday that we've been given. No, it's a, it's a holiday that reminds us that Jesus is who he claimed to be, God. That Jesus uh, uh, had what he claimed to have, that is power and authority. That Jesus would do what he claimed to do that is to die and rise again. And all those things secure our future. They, they help us to go through our present circumstances with a different perspective. And more than that, men allows us to walk knowing that our past is forgiven. That's why Easter is important. And, and, and I hope that you can be able to interact with that uh, conversation even deeper. Uh, and so I, I, I want to pray, want to sing and pray. I want to just remember that uh, even today, Lord, we need you. Even today, Lord, we desire to see your direction and your and, and, and take us in the way that we should go. It Thank you.
you, Father God, because I live a victorious life. The power of sin is broken because you are alive in me. I have the freedom because you, Jesus, set me free. I see an empty grave and I rejoice because I know that death can't hold me down anymore. Thank you, Father God, because you loved me so much that while I was still a sinner, you didn't wait for me to clean up, but you came and you died for me. I thank you, Lord, because of freedom that you have given me that we get to escape hell, but not only that, we get to live life here and live it fully in abundance of your love, grace, and mercy. That when we fall short, Lord, we rest upon the fact that you, O oh God, are our righteousness. We rest in the truth that you, God, are the way, the truth, and the life. That we can get to the Father through you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. And so, Lord, we want to thank you for every young person who's caught us today, who's watching. I want to pray for a conviction in their hearts. I want to pray that you would reveal yourself to them. More than that, I want them i want to pray that you'll give them the grace to uh, entrust their future to you to trust you in their present circumstances because you said you had power and authority but more than that they would that they would let their past go redeem them from all the sins in their past so that they can know as they walk into the future that the king of kings and the lord of lord calls them my son my daughter my boy my girl in jesus name we do pray and believe and all of us said Amen. amen and amen keep watching uh, uh you want to you know go to our different videos on this channel uh, otherwise see you next sunday as we continue the sermon series christianity 101 peace out <laughs> so you are